Former Unified Heavyweight Champion of the World, Anthony Joshua, is back March 8th, live on Zone Worldwide. He takes on former UFC Heavyweight Champion, Francis Ngannou. Interesting. Interesting matchup, this one. Some would say madness. Oh, yeah. But I would say really good, dangerous and exciting night ahead. Is AJ wrong for taking this? Hear me out before you answer, just because there's a lot of talk about Filip Hergovic. AJ's always said, I want the easiest route back to a world title. Philip Hergovic is number one ranked in the IBF. There are other guys out there, Frank Sanchez, Gili Zhang, maybe a rematch against Joseph Parker. Why not fight a boxer? So the, to answer your question, your question was the mm. fastest way back yeah. to Undisputed. Yes. Mr. Turkey Al Sheikh has already said the winner of this fight gets the winner of Is that fair fight. though? I understand. Is you life know, fair? Turkey Al Sheikh is playing this like a video game. He's admitted to it, right? You look at the poster behind. I mean, all you guys around my age will know this is from Street Fighter. Of course. It's almost like an arcade game. Ken versus Ryan. Wants. Yes, indeed. I'm more thinking Bison versus Blanca. Yes, <laughs> I get it. But to answer your question, AJ's always said he wants to get back to the top. Yeah. This is the fastest way to the top. He fights Hergovic. He becomes mandatory for one of the belts. He fights Nganu. He's fighting the winner of Fiori Yunusik. So either way, he wins, he's in line for the winner of Fiori Yunusik. And, and, and he's bypassed other fighters who are ahead of him. What do you make of Nganu? First, give me him as a person before you give me your answer for him as a fighter. Him as a person. As a person, I think he's probably the most formidable man in the world. The most frightening, most powerful man in the world as a human being and a fighting man. Yeah. In a boxing ring, average at best. Uh, but he caused the number one heavyweight on the planet all sorts of problems yep. in Tyson Fury. Yep. Surely that he's above average then, no? I mean, it's not that simple, it's never that simple, but surely it's if you go both. in there for your first fight and you put Tyson Fury on his backside. Of course. An average fighter shouldn't, couldn't do that, could they? Or? They did, they just done it. Okay. So. It, it's quite simple. He went in there, he, he approached the fight in a way that Tyson Fury did not expect. He chose to go on the back foot and box Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury's worst nightmare is a fighter who does not press him. Mm. Hence Otto Waller. Hence Francis Ngannou. Hence Steve Cunningham. Yeah. The list goes on with guys who don't press him, guys who are smaller, uh, and fighters who just want to draw his, want to draw his, you know, force in first. He, he struggles with it really bad. He always has, he always will do. He struggles with counter punches, he struggles with back foot fighters. Francis Ngannou posed Tyson Fury problems that he should never have been able to do. And he but done, he did. Of course he did, but he done that and, okay, let's just, he dropped him, yes. Yeah. Now, it's very rare that a fighter, AJ gets in that ring on that night, he beats him quite quickly as well, if I'm being totally honest. Who, Fury or Ngannou? AJ gets in the ring with the same Fury that got him with Ngannou, AJ stops Tyson Fury quite quickly. The fact is that he turned up, take away what he's actually, what the words that have come out of his mouth. His words were, I've had a great camp, I'm in unbelievable shape. Okay, so why are you weighing in at your career heaviest? It doesn't, it, it doesn't take rocket science to work that through. He weighed in at a career heaviest because he thought it was a bit of a freak match. He thought it was a circus. And he got in there with a guy who'd done his homework, who had a plan, and who followed the plan religiously. Francis Ngannou is, is a baby in terms of what he can do in a professional boxing ring. He's the man to be feared. If you get... The, this guy's destroying anyone in a cage. This guy's destroying anyone in the street. He's so physically strong. But in boxing terms, he's a baby. So, so is AJ lucky then that he's almost had sort of what? 10 rounds mm. of seeing what Ngannou can do, whereas Fury had nothing. Fury almost went in there like we all did, mm. blind. We know, obviously, you're a big MMA fan like I am, so we know what he can do yeah. in a cage, so we know he can fight, but we never knew what he could do in the boxing ring. AJ now at least knows he can switch southpaw, he can fight on the back foot, he's got a good jab as well, he can he, do a few things. He does, Adi, but ultimately he will put a completely different game plan in place for AJ, believe you me. He will not box AJ the way he boxed Tyson Fury. If he boxes AJ and tries to go on the back foot, he's gonna get stopped pretty quickly. He has to press AJ, he has to make AJ question himself. He has to draw blood first, if I'm being totally honest. Can he? Of course he can, he's a big strong boy, but I don't believe his, his, his technical deficiencies will see him lose.
and, and I think we'll see him get stopped. Yeah. Does, I just does think AJ, AJ, AJ's better all around. Does AJ have to stop him? Like, not necessarily. This, this, not. this new version of AJ, and he's got a lot of plaudits since that win of Otto Wollin, obviously now linking up with Ben Davison. A lot of people says AJ's back, AJ's back. Does this AJ have to get rid of? He's never gone know. away. The fact is, everyone says AJ's back, there's this version. Of, they're all the same AJ. It's just about how he approaches each individual fight, and he's approached fights differently each time. People go on about, he was never the same since the Andrew Ruiz first fight. Well, we've seen the boxing in him against Joseph Parker. So where do people get these things from? He's just, he's been able to adapt and change as the, as the styles have, have came to him. He's now got a different style uh, with Francis Ngannou. For me, what will be most imp impressive will be him stopping Ngannou pretty quick. Yeah. But ultimately, it will, that will determine on how Francis Ngannou approaches the fight. If Francis Ngannou comes in and tries to box and, and have a boxing match with Asia, I think he gets stopped pretty quickly. I think the best chance Ngannou has sitting down on the shots, making the fight physical. And when I say physical, I don't just mean trading up shot for shot, because he'll lose quite quickly like that. I mean, tie it, AJ, get up close to them, hold them, tie him up, whack him to the body, make it a physical mess. That's the only chance I, I give Ngarni. And it's funny you say that, because I can't ever remember AJ being in the ring with anyone. Mm. Yeah, Vladimir Klitschko was big, but no one as imposing as Ngarni. No one bigger than AJ. Like, I did the face-off, and I couldn't believe the size of Ngannou. Oh, Obviously, AJ is slightly taller, but he's so thick set. Yeah, Whereas thick. AJ's been the bully in most fights. He, he's the one that everyone says can bully people because of his size. You say that, but then you forget the likes of Kubra Pulev, mm. big guy. Yeah, Vladimir not, Klitschko, yeah. big guy. Dillian White ain't small. He's very thick. He's very heavy. So he's been in there with thick set, heavy guys. He's never been in there with a guy with the mindset of this man. That's How's what he AJ's has. AJ's mindset. That's the one thing that's been questioned over the years. I well, think that's fair to say. That's the one thing that we're going to find out. Listen, on March the eighth, he has to show a mental resilience that he hasn't shown since Andy Ruiz too. Mm. A mental resilience that's going to because if this fight does go past four rounds, he's going to get pushed physically. He really is, and he, he's going to get he's going to get asked questions how much do you really want it that's the one thing I can say about Francis Ngannou that's different to every other fight in the world this guy's been put in situations and scenarios where it's not about how much you want it in a boxing it's how much you want it in life this guy's come from nothing this guy's literally slept in gyms streets just to get another step ahead and you're dealing with probably the most marketable heavyweight of the last 20 years it's fascinating isn't it, it, it it's, it's, it's a real clash of of a coming together of people from one end of the spectrum to the other and it, it's found its way here because of one crazy night in Saudi Arabia with France and Ghana against Tyson Fury that's why we are where we are right now yeah, some might say we are where we are because a certain Joseph Parker beat Deontay Wilder it was supposed to be Deontay Wilder versus yes. Anthony Joshua the co-main event's a special one Joseph Parker versus Gili Zhang yes. was coming off I think the best 18 months maybe any heavyweight's had when you think about it I thought he beat Philip Hergovic then back to back wins against Joe Joyce which is insane. He's a monster. He gets an opportunity against Joseph Parker beating Deontay Wilder. Great coming. He's coming off the best win of his career as well. Yeah. Both are coming off the best wins of their careers. Good fight, isn't it? It's a very good very fight, good and fight. I'm, I'm struggling to pick. Which is good. That means it's a good fight. It means it's a brilliant fight. It should be a main event, but because of His Excellency, say, Turkey Al Sheikh, it is now a co main. <laughs> but it, it's crazy, listen, it's nuts. Crazy. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think Joseph Parker's found a new lease of life under Andy Lee. Andy Lee's a brilliant coach and it is, is, comes from the tutelage of the greatest coach in the world the world's ever seen in the late great Emmanuel Stewart, the Kronk. Uh, he'll put a great plan in place. Can Joseph Parker stay away from that left hand? That's the big, that's the million dollar question. How far is Yuli Zhang? You know, we, we say like, is AJ, if AJ beats Ngannou, AJ fights the winner of Fury, you sick. If it's Yuli Zhang and you wreck Potentially, you could you wreck Joseph Parker? How far is he from that mix? He's the next shot of the heavyweight. He's right, isn't he? After AJ fights, if AJ beats Ngarni, he gets the crack at the undisputed. But whoever wins that undisputed fight, believe you me, next up is the winner of Zhang and Parker. Because well, who else is there, Addy? Hmm. It's got to be. If Zili Zhang knocks out Joseph Parker, or Joseph Parker defeats Zili Zhang, they offer it. It's like it's a knockout. It's 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 like a knockout. It's, it's Can I put you on the spot? Do you winner mind? stays on. on the spot. Go on. Bear in mind all the results that have happened recently, Wilder losing, AJ winning. If you were to rank your top five heavyweights right now, yeah. sorry, I know I'll put you on the spot with this one. One and two, Fury, Usyk, Usyk, Fury. I'm not going to have that debate with you. Three? Usyk. 
one. Usyk one. <laughs> Fiori, Fiori two. two. <laughs> AJ three. AJ three, yeah. AJ over Zhang. It. It's a good argument. Zhang there, you know. There's a good argument with body of work recently. Do you know what, mate? You've got more of a shot put in Parker three than Zhang. Beat Wilder. Of beat course. the man. Beat the man who beat the man. Well, but do you know in hindsight, who did Wilder really beat? I knew he was going to do that. Who did Wilder really beat? Who's he ever knocked out? Ortiz. Are we talking about the 95-year-old Ortiz? No, the 55. The guy who fought Rocky Marciano. 55-year-old Ortiz. <laughs> that one. Uh, it's, good. it's an interesting debate, though, isn't it? it listen, I get it, but... some good guys, then. Based on, on, on the, the whole amount of works, I'm going Usyk, yep. Fiori, yep. AJ, yep. Zhang, Zhang, Parker. Parker, Parker number five. Yeah. What a comeback since that loss against Joe Joyce. Well, just lost against, two years lost ago. against Dillian White. They lost against Dillian White. Look at the comeback. Just shows you. And Garni make your top 20? With the body of work that he's got, one fight. <laughs> one fight against the lineal heavyweight champion. I know, yeah, but... It's ranked fight. number 10 by the WBC. Is he the lineal heavyweight champion? Because he doesn't have the ring magazine belt anymore. I'm not having this debate with you. Um, anyway, look, March 8th, live on the zone worldwide. It is Anthony Joshua versus Francis Ngannou. Great co-main as well. Gili Zhang versus Joseph Parker. And so much more. You know, these Saudi Arabian cars are absolutely stacked. I'll be out there for this one. Can't wait to see you guys. See you soon.